Hello and welcome to World Inside. I'm Tian Wei in Beijing. We begin with the celebrations over a technological feat that Chinese engineers have been working on for nearly three decades. On Tuesday, China launched its final satellite to form its own global navigation network called Beidou Satellite Navigation System. The constellation of satellites now gives the country its own navigation system that rivals GPS. The system is able to serve global users with positioning, navigation, timing, short message communication, and international rescue services. Work on Beidou began in 1994, and a partially built system had already been providing services since 2019. Now that's complete, global users will finally be able to access everything it has to offer. For more, joining us in Beijing, Yang Yuguang, professor at the China Aerospace Science and Industry Corporation, and in Washington, D.C., Amitabh Ghosh, who is a chair of the Science Operations Group under the NASA Mars rover mission. Welcome to both of you. Dr. Yang, a professor, tell me about your reaction to the latest success. You were involved in the overall process of the Beidou system. Well, uh, the successful launch yesterday can be called a milestone for the construction of the Beidou navigation system, also a very important milestone for China Area space. You see that the Beidou navigation system has already had three generations. The first generation, we used two satellites to provide services for limited numbers of users on the ground. From the second generation, we can, theoretically speaking, provide services to infinite numbers of users, but only for those in the Asia Pacific region. For the third generation, last year we have uh, completed the basic uh, configuration of the system. And this year we launched the last satellite of the constellation. So we can provide comprehensive service for users all over the world. Mm. That certainly is good news. Uh, let me go to Dr. Gosh. Uh, hearing the news from um, Washington, I guess uh, it's a different uh, perspective. Right. So I, I think. Uh, increasingly, um, um, many countries are, it is natural that many countries will develop their own capabilities. And you're seeing this in space and you're seeing this in technology as well. So, so you know, um, um, I was reading a few years, a couple of years back, I think India also has started building a, a global positioning system. Mm. So this is, of course, um, a very good, I think, developments in the technology fora can make life only better for wherever on earth this happens. So I think um, in, if you look at our life today, um, there's a term called geotagging. You know, it was unheard of. When I bought my camera 10 years back, there was a geotagging feature which let every picture be known wherever it was taken. And at that point, I asked, why would I want to know where I took the picture? Mm -hmm. But now, that is very, very fundamental to our lives. Anything we do, if I'm ordering pizza today, I want at this point to know where the pizza person is on the road, how many milli millimeters or how many meters away or me yes. kilometers away from my home. So I think this is a very welcoming uh, situation uh, that China also has uh, will soon have uh, its own system, so it can only mean a better quality of life on Earth. We hope that is the case. According to the latest NASA description of Beidou system, after the successful launch from China, the Beidou navigation satellite system has been independently constructed, developed, and operated by China, taking into account of the needs of the country's national security, economic, and social development. As a space infrastructure of national significance, Beidou system provides all-time, all-weather, high-accuracy positioning, navigating, and also timing service to global users. That is uh, the description on NASA's webpage about uh, its own feedback and description of uh, the Beidou system. Now, uh, Dr. Ghosh, how do you see the competition among various systems? And how far is Beidou system from catching up with its uh, bigger counterpart, the GPS system? So I think since they have launched it 
this year it should be comparable in technical capability. So um, I'm not exactly familiar to, with the exact te technical uh, uh, features. Having said that, see there is, I think there is no real competition. I think there is some maybe competition, but, but each s system has to cater to its own users. Mm -hmm. And in this country, in, in this context, it's their own country. So, so right now, as I said, in a commercial sphere, um, everything is geotagged. We have the iOS world. This is the iOS meaning Internet of Things world. You want everything um, tagged with a geographical location and not just once, you want continuous tracking. Mm. So I think in the space infrastructure for um, um, this is a, the more capability that you have, mm -hmm. and I think increasingly countries will develop capability, I think it will enhance um, the user experience on Earth. Mm. Professor Yang, your take now, China after the successful launch has been uh, talking about the significance of its success, including its uh, significance of uh, scientific development and as well as national security. So uh, even though your NASA colleague Dr. Ghosh has been very polite in expressing his views about uh, its more uh, diversity rather than competition, um, Professor Yang, the underlining uh, meaning of all of the latest development does put ourselves into a very different situation, I would assume. What about your comparison between Beidou system and also the GPS system? Well, honestly speaking, uh, Dr. Amitabh Ghosh is not only uh, very polite, but also uh, very, I totally agree with his opinion. You see that from the view of uh, commercial aspects, they do have some competition. But you know that uh, because of the uh, very distinctive features, technical features of the navigation satellite uh, technology, if the user can re receive signals from different uh, constellation systems, uh, you can, the user can get more accurate precision and more accurate timing. I should mm -hmm. also emphasize that uh, with different accuracy, you can do different things for different applications. For instance, if you have only a uh, uh, accuracy about one to two meters, uh, you will have no difficulty on uh, navigate yourself to anywhere in the city. But mm. if you can have a higher uh, accuracy, you can also do much more things that you cannot imagine that before. For instance, the monitoring the movements of the, the railway tracks to ensure the safety and other things. And uh, the, the several days before, there were also a very interesting application to measure the altitude of the, uh, the mountain Everest. Mm. Uh, having said all of this, how much do you think uh, the Beidou system will provide its service and how fast, Mr. Yang? Well, uh, we, should, uh, we should also know that, you see, the space, uh, the, the, the GPS has a much longer history, development history, than the Beidou system. And also we should see that the, today, the, the whole industry, I mean, not only the Beidou navigation constellation itself, but also the downstream industry has already grown to uh, uh, the, the amount of about uh, 100 billion uh, yuan. In the future, it can be comparable with the, the whole industry of GPS, for uh, almost one trillion yuan. So we still have a very long way to go. But Beidou also has its own very good advantages. For instance, the Beidou navigation system, since the first generation, it can provide short text messages. These short text messages has two uh, very great uh, contribution to the uh, disaster reduction, such as those in the Wenchuan earthquake. The rescue teams can use this short text message to provide a very useful uh, information for the uh, for, uh, for for this kind of this kind of goal. So what you're saying, uh, it seems, is that Beidou system can be complementary to what is already existing a system worldwide. Uh, Dr. Ghosh, do you agree? Will this be a geopolitical battleground just as 5G has been? See, I don't think it is going to be like 5G. Mm, tell me um, more. I, th I, I, do, I do want to pick up with one of Dr. Yang's points, and I agree with him. So when you build an infrastructure service, and this is like an infrastructure service, the applications come down the road. And so the numbers that he quoted, that you know how much business it has generated, that will only grow. And so that, will, that means more and more people are finding it useful. 
and that is all a good thing. So, so when, when the US first started its internet service, so many people were skeptical as to why are you trying to spend money here? Why would people want to send an email message? Because there is the postal service, right? So here also, there are many, many things which we perhaps don't apply uh, the global positioning system to, uh, which we will find a um, usefulness to geotag. So there will be many local um, uh, uses which will validate uh, the system, validate the building of the system. Well, uh, there is a very interesting uh, application uh, related to your question that I have discussed with my uh, friends from Switzerland to use the signals of the navigation satellites to for the positioning of the uh, probes near the lunar space. Uh, so this is a very interesting one. In the future, if we can have more sensitive receivers and also it has a bigger antenna, it is possible for these probes either on the lunar surface or in the orbit in the lunar space to receive the signals from navigation satellites, either from GPS or fatal navigation system to have a more accurate positioning. So this is, you see, this is a good start for the future potential uh, application of these kind of services in the uh, pure scientific research and space exploration. And for I also emphasize that this field is very good for us to cooperate together. And there is also another very good example, although it is very difficult, difficult for China and the U.S. to cooperate now in space field, but the NASA has read their request uh, to use the uh, Qiaqiao or the Mecca Bridge data relay satellite for the future potential uh, missions of NASA on the far side of the moon. Mm. Will this be opportunities that all sides can tap into, Dr. Ghosh? What do you make of its role for future aerospace exploration if you think of this is beyond country um, if you are building a really new capability then it is a different level i think so for example you know elon musk is trying to build this new spacecraft which will take 400 people to mars well if he's successful he sets a different infrastructure standard for space transportation for space tourism um, so, so that is one type of, you know, infrastructure. So, so here you have a competing capability being generated. Mm. And it, it is there for a purpose to serve the local population. And of course, there must be other uses as well. You can think you can go to the global market and you can avail a few providers right. um, to do a specific job. So, um, so wh why, specifically, why would you choose two specific providers is not very clear. But um, I, I think we have this everywhere. We have many cell phone companies. We have um, many um, companies that provide email and social networking. And so that is how the world um, infrastructure market works. Mm. One of the things that we haven't really talked about, but it's really the underlying thing for everything we have talked about is the geopolitics. Um, I don't want to overemphasize on that, but really the world has changed. As we have seen, whether the pandemic over the past half year or the pandemic plus geopolitics, how much it has meant for all of us. So um, Professor Young, if I could be upfront with you and point out this white elephant in the room can you help me to understand how much independence China would feel as a result of the success of Beidou system from what some in China believe as the control of technology and the outer space by the United States as a result of the earlier GPS system? Uh, you see that the navigation satellite system, uh, I mean the constellation and also the whole industry is very important for all countries, especially those space capable nations uh, for their either their uh, security, the national security and for the uh, daily life. So big countries, especially the uh, space capable nations like the US, Russia and China and Europe all develop its own navigation system. Uh, you, 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 can, you can use the system of other countries, but uh, it is very necessary for these countries to develop the, its own system. You see India and Japan also develop their own system. Either it is a regional uh, navigation system or a uh, navigation enhancement system. 
So uh, this is very necessary for the uh, country and also it will promote the development of high technologies for these countries, not only for comp competition with other countries, but mm -hmm. also uh, from the global view, you see that China is promoting its one belt one road uh, strategy from the second generation of the Beidou navigation system, it can already provide very important technological infrastructure for this strategy. And for future in the global uh, wide, it can also help other countries and benefit. Will be, uh, it will be a winning game for China and its partners mm. to work together. Uh, so the navigation system provides a very good platform for these kind of corporations. And from the, uh, uh, from the political view, I think that there do not have essential uh, conflict between China and the U.S. But size does matter. Scale matters too. And who comes first also matters a great deal because uh, whoever comes first will already attract so many users and big data is extremely crucial. So Dr. Ghosh, how do you see the competitive edge from now on, whether it's Beidou system or other navigation system by Japan, India, Russia, and Europe. Uh, how do you see the competitive edges of these systems? See, I think there is an, there's obviously an advantage for a country to develop its own navigation system. But having said that, the, ultimately the private sector who implements some of these uses will make the call of which system to use. Mm. Um, and so there is an incremental benefit, I feel, because it's, the service is already available in the marketplace, but at the same time, it is very important for a country. And otherwise, no country would have developed its own system. That's right. right? That is the whole reason different countries have different systems, because they want to make sure they are not shut out. Right. Um, uh, finally, so that's obviously there. Yeah. Finally, before we go, I want to have uh, your view briefly about the commercialization of the service, uh, whether it's a GPS or a Beidou system for the future or the other systems. Uh, commercialization, really important because that works with the market. Uh, how do you see the potential of Beidou system, uh, Professor Yang? I have mentioned that there are more applications in the future because the increasing accuracy. There are many applications that are very quite different from before. You see, for the reliability, you see sometimes we need the God coordinate all the positioning system with very high reliability. So in this case, we should choose uh, the receiver which can compatible with different right. systems such as CPS and Beidou. So this will be more reliable. And in the future, we can have, uh, if the accuracy can reach to centimeters level, so we can have more accurate applications yes. such as monitoring the earthquake and others. I see. Dr. Ghosh, final words too. So I think the future is where it is all is. Anytime you build an infrastructure system, um, the readily, all the benefits are not um, apparent. So, so the same example I would give is when you... Um, started doing data cables in the United States in the 90s and when the internet was just starting out, who would have thought that there would be social networking 15 years down the road? And who would have thought that social networking would be so important, be such an important part of commerce? So here also, the location of objects and people at all times is a very important problem mm -hmm. for, for industry, for individuals. So I think going forward, there is a huge amount of applications. Amitabh Hagosh, Yang Yuguang, thank you so much for joining us. All the best. Be well. You're welcome.